So I actually woke up in a helicopter and there's someone hovering over me and he's literally like forcing my eyelids open because I think maybe he was afraid that when I fell asleep that that may be the last time. Tiffany, you take one, Amy Mark. I'm the youngest of four of a Taiwanese immigrant, my dad, and a refugee from the Vietnam War, my mom. It was 1997, and at that time, I'm nine, I'm in fourth grade, and my mom had to travel for a business trip. We dropped her off at the airport, and on the way home, my dad, my dad actually ended up having a seizure. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt at the time, and so we we're kind of in this ditch, and in that period of time, I used my left hand to pull uh, to pull the seatbelt, and I I just held it at at the at the buckle, and I used my right arm to grab the. It's called a grab handle, but most people know it as an oh shit <laughs> handle. My dad actually ended up having another spasm, and in that spasm, his his foot floored it on the accelerator, and we ended up just shooting across you know three or four lanes of an empty highway, and upon impact. I paralyzed my arm known as a brachial plexus injury, so the, the injury is right here. And then I ended up breaking my femur and my tibia in my left leg. So my dad passed away. He died in the car accident. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to fathom because my siblings and I are the last people who saw him alive, you know? Um, and I don't know, there's part of me that's like, I don't think a nine-year-old should have to witness something like that. I didn't tell anyone that my dad had died. We told everyone that my dad was away on a trip. Poor health, you know, having, having a disability, anything, that, anything traumatic would mean that something was wrong with the family for this to happen. I think the line of thinking is that you only share things that will bring pride to the family. Crying or showing grief or sadness were viewed as, as weakness. My understanding was that our pathway to success was through assimilation, through erasure of what made us different. And so success was blending with the wallpaper and not drawing any attention to yourself. What I internalized was Everything related to the car accident was shameful. I now had a visible manifestation of shame to the family. I then wanted to just like hide, hide my arm. And I have this jacket that I literally wore every single day. And it was probably like four sizes too big. So keep in mind, I'm like probably 12 years old and I'm wearing a adult medium even in the most extreme of, of weather temperatures, it was so hot, I'd still be wearing this white linen jacket and sweating everywhere underneath. But wearing the jacket was more important to me and hiding my arm than being comfortable in that weather. I ultimately ended up going to Georgetown, which is like 20 minutes away from where I grew up. My senior year, I was a resident assistant. And so in October, I was on a student panel about disability. No one knew that my dad passed away in the accident. It was the first time I told the truth publicly. And I remember, I remember I cried. Um, and I, I think back to those tears because I feel like I cried because not only was there a lot of pain, but I also think I cried because it was the first time I felt seen. And the first time that I was validating that that story was real. So in 2009, Diversability was a student club that was trying to create a movement around disability pride. The reason why I picked like this movement around disability pride, we as disabled people need to do the work to unlearn our own internalized shame or internalized ableism that we hold about 
how we carry ourselves through the world, whether for me it was blending in with the wallpaper, right, and not drawing any attention to myself. For the first 12 years that I was disabled, I was not curious about anything regarding the way my body worked, to now getting more curious about the things this one body that I've been gifted can do. I think part of how we've gotten to this point is we have felt so uncomfortable around disability, talking about disability, offending someone, not using politi politically correct terms, that we actually haven't made progress. Society continues to remind us that we should feel shame about who we are and hide away. If you fundamentally believe that disabled people are subhuman, we are going to continue to be dehumanized. Curiosity is how we create intimacy and it's how we heal together and have a better understanding of someone whose perspective and lived experience is totally different from our own. And in order for two people who have opposing views to come together, there needs to be a willingness on both sides to get curious, to ask those questions and to actually listen to the responses and the conversation that's happening. It's okay if we don't know everything, but we can get curious. It starts with us.